I recently posted a video talking about Google's all new game and gen, and a lot of you had interesting thoughts on it. So let's take a look at what you all think and just how big of a potential game and gen has for the future of gaming, game and gen's future. Getting right into the topic, this one comment caught my eye. And of course it leads to the question, is game and gen and AI game development truly the future of gaming? Okay, hear me out on this one. Maybe it's true that right now, it can't completely take over traditional gaming engines. There's no denying that. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the development of Game & Gen is extremely significant, not just in the AI landscape, but also in the gaming side of things. Traditionally speaking, creating a game has always been a huge ordeal. Thousands of hours of coding, designing, testing, iterating. Years can be spent on the development of one game. But if AI-driven engines actually do take over, this whole process, it becomes way faster and cheaper. In fact, it also becomes a lot more accessible. I mean, someone who has no coding experience or programming knowledge can't create a game right now, but theoretically speaking, these AI gaming engines might open up game development for them too. I mean, imagine if you could create a whole game world by simply describing it in a prompt or sketching a few ideas. This is all that would be required for these AI gaming engines to cook up the whole thing for you. And no matter which side of the debate you're on, you simply can't deny the fact that AI is taking over many different industries, which also includes the creative art field. In fact, Boston University's information systems professor, Dokian Lee, co-authored a paper earlier this year, which examined the ability of text-to-image AI in helping humans create high-quality digital art. This study actually found out that AI has enhanced creative productivity by a whopping percentage of 25%, and even the value of the art by increasing 50% over time as AI is becoming more commonly used. Don't take this study lightly, because a data set of more than 4 million artworks by more than 50,000 users was actually used to prove this point. You can argue if you want, but it's a fact that AI-assisted products are taking over, and art is no different. And why wouldn't it? Whichever industry you look at, AI has the ability of making the workflow faster and cheaper. Think from a business point of view. Why would you not incorporate it in your work, right? And the same goes for game development. Maybe completely erasing traditional gaming engines is not the only outcome. But for now, it is definitely going to complement the traditional process and make it a whole lot faster. Like it or not, the future is AI. Death of human creativity. But as AI becomes more and more advanced and is even taking over the creative industry, one question of course stays. Is this the death of human creativity? No doubt it's an important question. If AI can do anything, will humans never need to use their brain again? In fact, will humans and their jobs just be completely replaced? Your opinion might differ on this, but personally, I think that in terms of game development, we can't fully rely on AI, at least not yet. In terms of creativity, AI is far behind the human mind right now. I mean, think of it. Even if we use image generators like Midjourney or Dolly, we are the ones with the creative ideas. We have to tell AI what to generate. And even then, the designs are fairly similar. But in games, we simply can't work with a homogenized look. Think of RDR or GTA or COD. All the really good games of these days, they all have one thing in common. They all have a whole world that looks entirely different, and that is what makes gaming so fun, right? Well, AI simply can't do that right now, and if the gaming industry does start to fully rely on AI right at this day, we may end with overused designs, which means less uniqueness. And let's be real, who wants that, right? Immersing yourself into a whole world in a new game is truly the fun of it all. Of course, it's not just about the gamers, but even the gaming companies wouldn't want that. So don't worry, right now, the human touch in the world of game development is definitely necessary and will definitely stay. Trust me, it can't leave until AI has its own full brain and can channel its creativity like the human mind. How did Game & Gen recreate Doom? But you might be thinking, wasn't Game & Gen creating its own version of Doom? Isn't that like the AI being creative? Isn't that creativity? Well, to answer your question, let me tell you the steps that it took to recreate Doom using Game & Gen. So first and foremost, the Google team needed the AI to generate data, and the thing is, Generating complete gameplay videos at bulk using humans was just impossible. So, to tackle this, the team used a reinforcement learning-based agent. This agent was trained to play Doom and generate a whole dataset or gameplay videos. Once they had the data, they had to train the Generative Diffusion model. They started off with a smaller version of a model called Stable Diffusion Version 1.4, which consisted of a UNet-based architecture. This architecture is typically used for generating images from text, and they use this capability to work with the game Doom by focusing on different sequences of actions and frames that the game produces. During this training process, they intentionally added some random noise to the frames to make them less clear than normal. This might be confusing. Why would they intentionally ruin their own game, right? But this was actually done so the model could learn how to fix these noisy images. As the model learned to fix it and recover the original images from the noisy ones, 
the model became better and better at generating stable and clear images during the gameplay. Lastly, the team fine-turned the game using a latent decoder. The Stable Diffusion 1.4 model that they pre-trained actually consists of an autoencoder, which is specifically designed to compress images into smaller and simpler versions while ensuring that no important information is lost, which is referred to as latent representations. In this specific scenario, it takes 8x8 eight eight pixel sections of the game image and compresses them into four different channels. However, when the model tried to create new game frames, it sometimes produced unwanted glitches that were quite visible as well, especially in small details of the game. Maybe these glitches weren't that huge of an issue, but they do make the images and gameplay look a lot less realistic. So, to fix these issues, the team focused only on the decoder part of the autoencoder. This decoder was responsible for turning the compressed information back into full images without any glitches. So, as far as the creativity topic goes, the whole process is based on feeding the AI a whole lot of gameplays. Humans had to take the first step and teach the AI the world of Doom. You can't say the AI came up with the whole design or the world. It wasn't the AI's creativity. What the AI did was take the previous gameplays, learn how the game works, and generate a new gameplay as the player goes on. Without many creative ideas of its own, it's like having an intern. You can get things done that you teach, but you don't really get a whole new thing. That's the level of AI right now in terms of game development. And of course, this whole process from data generation to encoding, I'm sure you can tell it was all quite lengthy. But hey, as long as it was, it did all turn out well, didn't it? I mean, say what you want about game engine and AI and gaming, but the team did manage to make the game look pretty realistic. I mean, even generating new content when the user enters the room and killing animations. This whole AI-generated game is pretty realistic as far as OG Doom standards go. I mean, even if you've played Doom all your life, you probably won't be able to recreate every little detail as well as this AI did. That's where AI beats the human mind. It's memory. Not much on the creativity front, though. However, even then, some of you may still describe all this as a waste of computing power. But then again, as this user pointed out, what game isn't a waste of power, right? Impact on the gaming industry. Enough about the cons, though. This advancement does have a lot of positive impacts on the gaming industry, too, that have gone unnoticed. Well, one is, of course, the reduced development cost and time that I've already pointed out. But even other than that, if game engine and AI gaming engines do get more popular, it improves the realism and interactivity of games by a huge extent. I mean, game engine can generate game frames in real time. This means games can become much more realistic and interactive than ever before, thus completely changing the way video games are experienced. Moreover, it also increases the extent of customization and adaptability in game development significantly. The creation of AI gaming engines means that games will be able to adapt in real time, completely based on player actions and preferences. This opens up a completely customized gameplay for each player, thus creating a much more immersive and unique gaming experience for each player. It's benefits like these due to which the Google team is particularly optimistic about the potential of game gen and AI gaming in general. Sure, there are downsides and limitations to it right now, but the possibilities that lie ahead are huge. I mean, can you even imagine generating a whole video game by just typing a description or providing a few images? This might soon become the reality. Maybe not right away, but it definitely is the near future. For now, maybe AI hasn't fully taken over gaming, but as this user said, it definitely has taken over YouTube. There's no doubt about that, but taking over YouTube isn't just about clickbaits or for content. The fact that it is taking over the internet only means that AI is in fact slowly but surely creeping into every aspect of our life. And gaming is definitely on that list. This is why Game & Gen completely transforms how we view the world of game development. A whole new world of creativity and innovation is coming, and as you experience this technological revolution, remember the future of gaming is bright, whether AI takes over or AI is just an assistant. If you're as pumped about AI and gaming as I am, make sure to give this one a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one with more mind-blowing updates.